Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Angie. For those who are new to my channel, our Lord started giving me messengers. He calls them from His heart to yours. He started doing this on the 7th of January 2024 when we consecrated a fast here in Queensland, Australia for seven days to draw closer to Him, a relationship with the Father, to know His heart. On the very first day, he started giving these messages. Now, prior to these messages, he asked me to do a video every day. I did this for seven months. <laughs> now I only do videos when he gives a message. And he's given me one today. I think today's message is the most beautiful, most loving. Most heart moving, touching I don't know how to describe it. You have to listen to it for yourself. And I will put the message in the description below the this video so you can read it yourself. Now he calls me he seer, he's messenger. It is not something I called myself. He called me that. I had to find out what it meant years ago when he called me that. And he can open my eyes. His Spirit, Holy Spirit, can open my eyes. It's not something I'm trying to do. Not something I wanted to do. But He'll open my eyes. I can see His holy angels. Yes. Um, their, assignment, their assignments. <laughs> Have your way, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Alright, so I'm, I'm talking to you, but at the same time, I'm talking to Him. It's a relationship. And he's talking to me. All right. So what he's done, he's brought to my mind a time when an angel was presented before me and he walked around toward me when I was sitting outside and he was dressed in cream-colored trousers and a blue shirt. He looked at me and he just touched me and he went. And I'm like, Lord, what happened there? <laughs> Promptly I fell asleep. In a dream, I saw a woman. She was in a car behind the steering wheel and the car was submerged in water and she was frantic. She was looking frantically around her. I saw the same angel. He appeared in the water outside the window of the lady that was in the car that was submerged under water. But he appeared as a little boy this time. Same cream trousers though, same blue shirt. I knew it to be the angel I'd just seen who came to, to me. The woman turned, saw the angel, and suddenly she, she had faith. And she found a way and came out of that car. She was released from the car. The angel came to her and released childlike faith. That's why he appeared as a child in the dream, childlike faith. She had childlike faith to the father, stopped being frantic, and she was she escaped. Hallelujah! Have you ever been in and ever felt so submerged, trapped? Being in a car is, is a ministry. It's representing your life. So you can feel that you're overwhelmed by the waters. You look to the father with childlike faith. The holy angels with you, wherever you can register them, no, I can around me now. Or see them with your eyes being opened by the Holy, by Holy Spirit. Know their assignments or not. They're with you. They'll help you fulfill your destiny. They'll guard you, protect you and watch over you. They'll bear you up in their arms. So not even your foot will strike a stone. They'll camp around you and keep you from all evil, physical or spiritual sent by the enemy. Hallelujah. Whether it's flesh or spiritual, they'll protect you. You live your life for the Lord. Those who live a life of worship unto him. There's more angels around them because they love worship. They love worship. So you can have more angels around you by living a life of worship unto God. Okay. Now, Holy Spirit, is anything else? Because he just stopped kind of what I was doing there and just... The Holy Spirit, you have your way, please. These are not my videos, understand. I do them in obedience to our Lord. He can have his way and do what he wants. Keep going. Thank you very much. So you can open my eyes to the spiritual realm, what the enemy's doing as well. 
I get shown and revealed things. Give me understanding. Destroy the works of the enemy, cancel his works. I learn deeper things as seer and what he reveals to me, what's happening. You can write things up in the realm. Dreams, visions. These messages take me in the spirit. Whatever he wants, my life is laid down. It's his, his bidding, his will, his purposes may manifest in my life and through my life to his glory. Hallelujah. Yes, a life laid down, Holy Spirit just said. I live in sacrifice unto him. A burnt offering, which I'm going to be talking about in a moment. Well, after this message. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bless you, Holy Spirit. And this is what he wants for everyone, he says. What I'll be sharing. I'm going to be sharing a most personal message from the Father's heart to you. Now, he knows you. I might not, but he does. He knows you. He drew you here to this video to watch it, to hear the message from him. So I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you minister to all the hearts of those who are watching right now to receive this message from the Father's heart to theirs. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They'll lay down any perceptions, um, beliefs, anything that they thought about Father prior to this video right now. To truly yield their hearts over to you, Holy Spirit, so you can minister to their hearts and reveal truth to them. Thank you, Holy Spirit, to yield themselves over to you. Minister to them, please, Holy Spirit. Touch them wherever they are in the world. There's no distance in the Spirit. Have your way right now, Holy Spirit, for all those who are watching, all those who can hear my voice. Let the peace and the presence of God come upon them. So yield to him now. To your voice, Holy Spirit, and have your way. All right, it reminds me to say as well, the Lord asked me to put white curtains behind me. Not my idea. <laughs> His idea represents the heavenly realms, heavenly places where these messages are coming from by the Spirit of God. Heavenly realms were being lifted with Lord Jesus, raised up with him, seated with him in a position of rest. The finished work of the cross, resurrection, life, and power. Authority over the realms of darkness, dominion over the earth. It is a place of seating, sitting, seated, seated with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's done it all. He's done it all. Now we enforce it by His Spirit. Hallelujah! The finished work of the cross, walking in His life, in the power of His might by His Spirit. To the degree and level that you have an understanding of your position with Christ is the degree and level that you will walk it out by His Spirit. Life will change as you know it. <laughs> now he asked me to wear a white shirt. I didn't want to share this part, but he's brought it to me, so I will. One time I was lifted up in the Spirit. And while I was lifted up in the Spirit in the heavenly places, I was placed upon me a white... Um, it was a white, I don't know how to call it, a jacket. The most beautiful, silky white, smooth material. And it was representing Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit ministry. And then recently he asked me to put a white shirt on representing this, which is Father's ministry, not mine, not my husband's, not ours, his, Father's ministry, led by His Spirit, Holy Spirit, hallelujah, thank you Holy Spirit, so have your way now, because He's, I can feel Him moving, I can feel Him moving, hallelujah, oh do you know there's a peace, and there's a rest, there's life, there's love, there's joy in Him, when the river is flowing, Yes, there is. There's a peace. Oh, let that come upon you now. The peace of the river. The river to flow upon you. Be drenched. Be submerged in him. Jesus is the river of life. And his spirit is with all those who believe. And that's him moving. Oh, there's the manifest presence of God. 
Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord. It is not something my eyes are opened up to. What There is a mist around me. That's the glory of God. Hallelujah. Jenny's you know doing this in every video. Does it in our home. Every home and part church. Wow. Do you know he's amazing? He's awesome. He's God. And we give him all the praise and all the glory for everything. All thanksgiving unto him. Don't look to man. Look to God. All sufficient. El Shaddai. The almighty. All sufficient one. You look to him. Your sufficiency. All your needs are met in him. You shall not want your needs to be met daily or load of your benefits. Hallelujah. Something I pray for us often. Yeah. So Father, before I do your message, just let me know what you want because I will just wait on you and you know it. Have your way for all your children right now. who are watching. He said, A prayer spoken from the heart will accomplish the thing it's sent forth to do when you speak it by his spirit. And I saw an arrow going forth. The prayer of a righteous man avails much. So this is a word for someone. If Holy Spirit unctions you in your heart to speak something, it can only be it can be just a tiny little prayer, a couple of sentences. One word, one word by the Spirit, unctioned by Him to speak forth, it'll prosper, it'll go forth, what it's sent forth to do. One time at Park Church, the Lord's bringing to my mind now, He let me He let me know my husband had a word for someone. So I turned to my husband, I said, you have a word for this lady, can you tell her? Can you speak it, please? He goes, what, me? I said, yes, you. <laughs> I said, he'll give it to you. He goes, okay. So he stepped over to the lady, and he had one word to speak. As the Holy Spirit gave it to him, he said, peace. As he said, peace, by the unction of the Spirit, the power of God came upon the lady, and she fell to the ground. Hallelujah. Hours later, if you looked at her, you could feel the presence of God's peace upon her. It was absolutely beautiful. Her face changed. You can see peace upon her face. It doesn't have to be a long, eloquent prayer. A prayer from the heart will avail much. A prayer from a righteous heart, looking to God, upright heart. Spoken in love, spoken by unction of the Spirit. So this is a word for somebody. I'm speaking and sharing this because Father wants someone to hear it. It's not how good you think you can pray in front of other people either. It's not how good or it's it's a heart prayer from the Father. It's just a very simple prayer. I've found the most powerful prayers I've prayed. It's just a simple heart prayer. You could be this mulling over things in your mind going, Oh, Father, that would be good if that happened. And you're just mulling it over. Next thing you know, it's manifested in your life. Why? You look to him. He heard your heart. You you, you know, you, look, you turn and look to him. You, he heard your heart. Yeah. It's not that you wished it or thought it to make it appear in your life, which is law of attraction, which is demonic. In your heart, you are talking to the Father. And he thought, oh, my child, you, my beloved here, you have that. <laughs> you need to know how much he loves you I keep hearing he's the all sufficient one all powerful he's El Shaddai he's the almighty in which you abide under the wings of the almighty under the shadow of the almighty hallelujah okay father I'm going to read your message unless you want to do something else by your spirit I ask, Father, that you prepare the hearts of your children to hear this message. And my husband and I have prayed this. We have prayed already for all you who are watching these videos, for all those that come under Father's ministry covering. Okay. I wait for him. He says, commence. I can start. Oh, shalini na nondro shirakanda ande shimoki. Thank you, Father. 
So he's letting me know this will prosper, this message, and it, what it's sent forth to do too, because it's by the Spirit of God. Okay. Let's commence. This is what the word he said, commence. Are you ready? Wherever you are in the world, seated in white curtains, heavenly places. We're going to hear a message by, watch it, Holy Spirit. All right. And also, he might ask me to wear a white shirt. It doesn't mean everyone who's doing ministry needs to wear a white shirt. It doesn't mean everyone who does a video and puts white curtains. This is simply what he's asked me to do in obedience. It's what I'm doing. I asked, someone asked a question, where is it in the Bible you got to wear a white shirt? <laughs> when you get to know the Spirit of God, you're obedient to him. Lean not upon your own understanding, but trust him with all your heart. Be obedient. He's looking for our obedience. A heart that is willing and obedient to him, regardless how it might look to others. He tests our hearts. Will we be obedient to him? All right. Do you mind? I've written it down. I've typed it out. Praise God. Do you my personal prayer time with our Lord? I prayed. Father, keep us in the tabernacle of your heart, that we be the apple of your eye. And Holy Spirit highlighted tabernacle to me. So I researched the tabernacle of the Lord. Not a prayer I normally would speak. It just came forth as Holy Spirit unctioned me. Tabernacle in Hebrew means place of dwelling. You're going to want to hear this. The tabernacle of the Lord, which housed his presence. Having the ark of God in the Holy of Holies, a table for bread made of wood covered in gold, an altar for prayer made of wood covered in gold, and a lampstand all made of solid gold, with seven oil lamps, were in the holy place where the priests ministered and drew near to God. You can read that in Exodus 25, 31, 40. Then there was an outer court. Tabernacle of God. That's where his presence was in the Holy of Holies. The wood represented the nature of man, gold, the divine nature of God, which covered everything, and the lampstand being pure gold. I'm not going to go into all the meaning of all that. I'll just keep trying to keep it a little bit short here, so it's not too long this video for you. The tabernacle was placed in the center of the children of Israel camp. The tents faced and surrounded the place of the presence of God. He was the center of being. All being, all attention being on him. His manifest presence revealed as his glory cloud that led him by day a fire by night hallelujah exodus 40 34 to 38 you can read about that their attention was to be on his presence led by him day and night he was in the midst of them so that's what i read up about the tabernacle i had prayed for my family to be in the heart of god the secret place, making him our dwelling place, to be the apple of his eye, whom he delights in, thus under his protection and love. You'll read that in Psalm 91, Psalm 17 to 8. I like to speak the word of God out in prayer. I also prayed this for our loved ones and all those under Father's ministry covering. For those who are wondering who's under that covering, it's those who have subscribed to my YouTube channel, those who have given finances to Father's Ministry, those who come under the covering of Home and Park Church and regularly attend, and those who speak the Stay Free Deliverance prayers regularly. But I also pray for those who watch the videos. But it, So if you come under this covering though, my husband and I pray for you together by the Spirit every day, but I also pray for you separately in my own time with the Lord. Then the Spirit 
gave me the most beautiful, absolutely tender, loving message from the heart of the father to his child. You. Are you ready? So he had me research about tabernacle, had me pray the prayer first for us all, and then had me read about the tabernacle and then gave me this. So Father, I'm about to do your, your message now. Yes, and I do it in utmost reverence unto you. I'm accountable to you. These are your children. Let not one word fall to the ground. Let it be precious jewels of revelations to the hut. Let your crystal clean water come. Let clarity come. Thank you. I'm speaking that as I see it in the realm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you for what you're going to do in their lives and in their hearts. I truly understand these are life-changing messengers because they come straight from your heart to theirs. I thank you. Oh, that's the power of God. May your power, Father, fall upon all those who are watching right now who can hear my voice. Let your presence come, your glory. Oh, let them leave this message changed. Leave this message changed. After hearing it, they're changed within. To your glory. Thank you. Bless you, Lord. We give you the praise. And we give you the glory always, always. The heart of thanksgiving unto you and our mouths filled with praise as we look upon the one who is the glorious one on the throne, the King of ages, the King of kings and the Lord of all lords, the great I am, the Lord of hosts, Yahweh, Adonai, Elohim, Yeshua, our Lord and our Saviour. Our God who is mighty to save. Hallelujah. Oh, I'll keep praying, but I need to do the message. All right, here we go. Ready? Getting comfy? Mm -hmm. All right. It's my absolute joy, Father, to share this with your children. Thank you. Okay. My dear little one. Hear me now as your papa. Abba Father, dwell, which means to abide, take up residence, dwell in the tabernacle of my heart, making him your dwelling place, thinking about him often, living for him in his presence. Because my child, I dwell in the tabernacle of your heart. I am there with you. That is God with us, understand, Emmanuel. He's right there in your heart. And he's asking you to be in the tabernacle of his heart. That means to know his heart, to abide in him as he abides in you. Dearest little one, hear me. Abide in me as I abide in you. As one together when he said that he reminded me of a vision that the Holy Spirit gave me a while ago it was a vision of two people doing the three-legged race you know you get one leg in the sack and the other person puts their leg in the sack and then they had to run the race to who would win <laughs> Holy Spirit let me know that was him and I it's running the race together with him as one of the Spirit of God Yes. You are in my heart and I am in your heart. Dwelling. And when he said dwelling, doing life together, it's Holy Spirit showed me in that vision as one together. That means in agreement with each other, in alignment with each other, living life together. Dwelling together and you will fulfill destiny that I purposed when I brought you forth into the world listen to me though you are born into the world it is not your dwelling place 
It is not your center of attention. It's not where you, you look to. Your dwelling place is with me. When he said that I saw home written up in capital letters, home is with him, not here on this earth, but truly this passing through. Home is with him. Then I heard Psalm 42, 1, as a deer pants for the water brook, so my soul pants for you, our Lord. I long for you. He is longing for us. All of you. He's speaking to, he's telling me now he's speaking to you. I said us and it's true for all of us, but he wants you to know this is a personal message right for you. You who's watching this video, he's speaking to you right now. I long for you. All of you, not just a little of you, but all. I gave you my all, now give me your all. In me you are secure. I'll hide you in the tabernacle of my heart. Beneath my wings of protection and love, I will not leave you, nor forsake you, for you are mine. When he spoke that, I saw 43, 1 to 2 came to mind. I'm going to read it out before I continue the message. But now thus says the Lord, your creator, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. Someone needs to hear this verse. I've called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. And you continue the message. Seek me now, and you'll find me. For I dwell in the tabernacle of your heart. I am waiting for you. Look to me and you'll find me, for I dwell in the midst of you. Your loving Papa, Abba Father. When he gives me these messages, I can hear his heart. I can hear his love and longing for you. I'm going to read some scripture to you. If you read in John 14, 16 to 21, I don't think I'll read the whole thing out now. Because I really want the message being your, your attention, having your attention. But if you read there, it talks about how Jesus said, that you will know that I'm in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him, reveal himself. He was talking about the helper that will come, the spirit of truth. The world can't see him because they don't have him, but you have them. If you love me and keep my commandments and I'll pray the Father and he'll give you another helper and he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. Holy Spirit. I will not leave your orphans. I'll come to you. Holy Spirit whom you received at salvation at the beginning of your salvation walk when you said yes to Lord Jesus that you believe that Lord Jesus died on the cross for forgiveness of your sins unto righteousness hallelujah justification and then declared with your mouth that he is Lord and chosen you to live your life for him his spirit came his spirit came straight to our spirit and then started talking to our hearts and made his home in our hearts Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father, 
in spirit of the sun and he dwells with us in our huts father who sits on the throne in heaven lord jesus who sits on the right hand side of him the spirit is with you he's your helper it's holy spirit your teacher your comforter your counselor your leading guide you in this world of darkness through the light of the gospel of the truth of lord jesus the way the truth and the life He's the one that's doing the sanctification process in our hearts and in our lives, cleaning us up, refining us, making our hearts pure as gold, the divine nature of God. Holy Spirit, the most ignored capital P person that I've ever seen in a church, used and taken the glory for, the, for themselves. Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Yahweh. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of Yeshua, the Spirit of Christ, the Father is with you. He's in your hut. He's inhabiting your hut. He dwells in the tabernacle of your hut. And he's desiring that you dwell in the tabernacle of his hut. He's already there. But he wants all of your hut, all of your attention all of your focus, all of you on him. The Spirit of God of the Father dwells in you, sealed by him for eternity. If you read Ecclesiastes 3.11, I love this verse. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he's put eternity in their hearts, Holy Spirit. Except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to the end. You need to know where his workmanship, not our own. It's not a life of self-righteousness. It's the righteousness of Christ. It's his spirit does his work in us and then through us to the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. Oh, sealed by the Spirit of God as a guarantee. 2 Corinthians 1.22 Alright. Psalm 91.1-2 He who dwells in the secret place the shelter, the tabernacle, the hut of the Most High, the Father, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him I will trust. Then Psalm 27 was brought to me to, to read as well, out as well. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle, in his presence. In his hut. Who's getting it? In the secret place of his tent. Under his covering. He will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock and you will not be moved and now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me you need to know where you're seated with him and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy I mean you're going to be in his presence I will sing yes I will sing praises to the Lord we dwell in the tabernacle of the father's heart when we make him our dwelling place this is why the glory cloud is always with us wherever we go. We can be at the shops and it can be around us. We can be sitting down at a cafe and it's all around us. We've made him our habitation, our dwelling place. It just so happens our eyes are open to see. You probably made him your dwelling place too and the glory clouds around you, but you're not aware of it. Now, I'm going to add what happened. After my prayer time this morning with my husband, he left, he got up and left the room, but I continued to pray. He had things to do, but we had our time together praying. And I prayed from my heart and said, Father, it's not a prayer that, um, it's something that I pray every now and then. Father, may our lives, I used to pray nearly every day, he knows it still stands. Father, may our lives be
be a love offering poured out to you a sacrifice that is pleasing unto you living a life of worship to you I spoke it from my heart and then I smelt something it was like um, food burning I go what's that I could smell it if I knew my daughter wasn't cooking and then I realized it was spiritual it, it smelled like food or something burning like the smoke of something burning and then I knew it was spiritual, so I said to the asked our Lord, what was I smelling? And he said to me, burnt sacrifice. So food offered as a burnt offering at the altar unto our Lord was always totally consumed. Nothing remained. It was a pleasing aroma to God. You can read that in Levititus 1 to 9. My prayer, because I prayed it for all of us, my prayer for us all was to live a life of a burnt offering unto the Lord, a life laid down to him, a living sacrifice. You can read, read, read that in Romans 12, um, 12, 1, I think it is. Thus, it was a burnt sacrifice. Understand? It was a burnt offering unto the Lord, a life laid down to him. A living sacrifice unto him meaning nothing left of self when something was placed on the altar as a burnt offering there was nothing left of it but ashes there was nothing left everything was given over to God it meant nothing left of self or for him our lives totally laid down on the altar to him and then to self and he let me know such a prayer from my heart pleased him and I prayed that for us all all our attention needs to be on him just as the tents of the children of Israel faced at the tabernacle of the Lord as soon as they stood at the entrance of their tent their eyes were on God tent represent our covering us him being our center just as the tents of the children of Israel surrounded the tabernacle of the Lord surrounding the tabernacle that held his presence acknowledging him in all our ways living for him amen thus shall we shall be in the tabernacle of his heart just as his spirit is in the tabernacle of our heart. Hallelujah. Absolutely beautiful. You got it? Did you get the message? Father wants to abide. He is already abiding in you. He wants to reveal and manifest himself to you. His spirit is there. He wants you to abide in his heart, in him, in his presence, to dwell in him, making him your dwelling place. That means your thoughts, your heart, your eyes are on him continuously, meditating on his word within your heart, speaking out words of him, your thoughts, your talk, everything is him. Someone put a, a comment on my Facebook the other day that people were ridiculing her, calling her a Jesus freak because she decided to live her life fully for Jesus. Some people don't understand because they lived living one foot in the world and one foot with God. Both feet into his kingdom, please. It's all in. It's life consecrated. Living for him, regardless of what anybody might say about it. It's all your attention on him. In your heart, you're looking to him, thinking about him, talking to him, meditating on his word, how he would have you live, and his spirit enables you to live it. Even reading the word of God, you read it by the spirit of God, he will bring it to life and enable you to live it. The Holy Spirit said, co-inhabit. 
so he wants uh, he he's living in us and he wants us to live in him in christ in christ in god in the heart of the father in the tabernacle the dwelling place the presence of god you fix your gaze upon him your heart affections on him colossians 3 2 set your mind your heart affection upon things above where you're seated with him in the heaven places for lord jesus father is only as far away as a thought within your heart you just think about him and love on him he's right there he's right there he hears every thought he hears your heart his spirit is cleaning our hearts up taking down walls of self-defense self-protection hardening of the heart because of offense rejection betrayal abandonment healing our hearts from heart wounds of hurt and disappointments hope deferred he's in our hearts it's us to yield our hearts over to him let him have his way and keep looking to him trusting him leaning depending on him it's a relationship papa wants a relationship with you you who's watching this video you seek him you'll find him you turn to him he's right there in your heart where can you go from his spirit nowhere he's right there you call out to him he's there you trust him you stand upon that rock and you'll not be moved greater is he the spirit of Yahweh in you amen beautiful beautiful spirit of the Lord spirit of Yahweh spirit of the Father Holy Spirit again minister to the hearts of all those who heard this message the most beautiful loving message an intimate message from the Father's heart this person who's listening and watching this video right now minister to their hearts please holy spirit heal their heart bring down those wars remove all offense and the unforgiveness unforgiveness bitterness resentment anger remove all from their heart that is not of the father not of him him because his spirit is within them you holy spirit the spirit of the father his nature his character be seen in them as they yield their heart over to you holy spirit so you can do that work because they are your workmanship thank you holy spirit bless you holy spirit just touch them again where they are where they're at in this world doesn't matter thank you is this a moving i see moving some of you might be feeling that is touching you right now Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for healing in their bodies, healing in their minds as well, healing in their memories, healing in relationships, healing in finances, healing in health. Your healing. I thank you for healing. For it is done, it's finished, the finished work of the cross. Be made manifest in their lives to the glory of the Father. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I'll see you in the next video. As um, as you know, I don't know when that will be. It'll be in his timing, Father's timing, by his spirit. Love you all. See you in the next one. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Just when I thought it was safe to go. Holy Spirit. Um, he just said your needs have been met. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You shall not want. Whatever's going on in your life, look to him, trust in the Lord. A simple prayer from the from the heart. Father, I have this need. I thank you that it'll be met. I thank you I shall not want. You look to him. And again I hear he's all sufficient. Your needs will be sufficient. He will provide for you. He will provide for you. Look to him, trust him. And don't give up. Don't give up. He's faithful and he's true. So he's saying to you right now, your needs will be met. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. You shall not want. There's no want in him. There's no want. Thank you. Thank you. Philippians 4, I think it's 6 to 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in all prayers, give your requests unto the Lord. Give a heart of thanksgiving. And his peace will guide your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name. God bless you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.